this is May Yu, and it's Fun Friday! Every Friday, I try to do something new, fun, or challenging. Today, I'm going to be doing 30 shades of grey, where I'm only going to use 30 grey art supplies to make an illustration. I have no idea how this is going to turn out. Alright, so first I'll try my grey Colyrase animation pencil to sketch out the lines. And now for the inking. I'll be using my favorite Castell Pit Artist brush pen. This is actually their warm gray brush pen. They have different gray shades and I chose this one. I know it might look black on the camera, but it's dark gray. So I'll just go in and start inking her. For inking, I like using this brush pen because I can get the different nice, thick and thin brush lines in the different areas of my drawing, just depending on how much pressure I put on it. I love how smooth the ink goes and flows. Just like, love, love, love inking with brush pens. If you follow me for a while, you probably remember a couple of my One Color 10 Shades art videos I did before. For this video, I decided to do 30 shades of grey. And actually, grey is a color I seldom use, especially for an entire artwork. I don't think I've ever used just all grey before. I guess I just never really thought about putting a lot of grey in my work. So, 30 shades of grey, here we are. Honestly, this is my first time doing an entire piece with just different shades of grey, including the sketching and inking stages. It's nice to try something new, and I feel like I can just let my mind just, like, wander and explore this new thing and see how to make it work and what I can come up with. I love inking long lines and curved lines. It's fun to make the thicknesses of the lines vary as I do the strokes. I've done quite a few mermaids before in my previous videos, but for this piece, I wanted to make the fins big with a nice soft look that has lots of curved lines inside. It looks like it'll be so soft if you touched it. Now I'm adding some background details like soft sea grasses behind her, just flowing nicely in the water. I decided to give her more of an environment to hang out in couple of starfish and shells. Ooh, I love shells. I like how my brush pen can go into very fine details, like the tip is very thin and I can get into small nooks and crannies in my drawing. For the tail of my mermaid, I decided to add some sea creatures into the design of the tail. I wanted to try something new because I wanted to make good use of such a nice space in the drawing. And instead of doing the usual scales or just like shades of colors, I decided to go for some interesting sea life that might be inside her tail. This is one of the fun parts. And it's like, you know, when I do my art, I'm the artist and I don't want to restrict my thinking. 
I like to explore and let my imagination run where it wants to. In case any of you just started out on your own art journeys, I really do encourage you to not be afraid to try different things. Here I'm using Blue Gray 1 to color her skin. This is one of my touch brush markers and I'm using the brush tip. It's very nice and soft. When I was choosing the grays for this video, I was going through like all my markers and picking out the ones with the word gray in the name. And some of the grays, like this one, could have a hint of another color to them, like blue or green. But if they had the word gray, I included it in this artwork. Actually, I think for the background, I'm going to use my other light gray. So this is touch marker green gray number one. So I expect this to have a warmer hue. Yeah, it looks... I don't know if you can see from the camera, but it definitely looks a lot more warmer than the blue gray I just used. Or a little bit warmer, but yeah, I can see a difference. Now I'll take a warm gray, so this is warm gray, number one, W1, and that is one of my Copic markers. And I'm gonna go into, I think, this area here, underneath. So this is nice to have something that's a, that's a little bit of a warmer hue. Just to add to that cozy feeling. Actually, the warm gray has a hint of light brown to it. It fits this area nicely because I'm getting her to sit on this rocky ledge. Okie dokie, on to my Windsor Newton brush markers. So I have a set of these warm grays. So I have warm gray number one, two, three, and four. And I'll use these next to start building the shade. First, I'm getting into her hair with my lightest warm gray brush marker. I like to leave some white areas for the shine in her hair. Now I'm adding another warm gray it's slightly darker. Just gotta keep adding more grays into her hair. Love building up the volume. Another layer. As it gets darker, it gets more and more vivid. I think I want to add some of a I think I'll add a cooler hue to the hair by using my blue-gray. So this is BG5, which is a touch brush marker. There, so that makes the shadows look a little bit cooler. I just want to balance out the different shades in the hair. And here comes another Winsor Newton brush marker. This is Cool Gray number one. I want to try adding this into her skin, see how that looks like. Because first I added the, like the blue gray, I think, number one, and now I'm just adding a cool gray number one. So this actually does look a lot warmer compared to the blue gray.
And this is my cobra number three. I'm using that for her little friend. When I was coloring the dolphin, I used curved strokes as I went along the contours of the body, so it looked like the strokes were like wrapping themselves around the surface. I think I'll go back into my blue-gray number one to add some of that into the dolphin. Okay, now I have these... Ah, try to escape! Alright, so I now I have these little markers. Two shades of gray. And I'll use these for some little details. I try to find different kinds of great art supplies I have. I don't even know where I got these from. It's been a long time, but they still work. That's pretty good. The tip is very thin and hard, which is good for drawing small details. The other one was darker, so I added lots of thin strokes in her hair for more texture. Now I'm going to use one of my Crayola markers. So this is Kitten Gray. I wonder how this is going to look like on my art. Well, I remember getting these Crayola markers like four years ago when I was doing my drawing color tutorials. I don't know, do any of you remember watching those videos? Did you draw along? I'm curious. I know some of you told me that you still want to see some new tutorials and I'm planning one for you, so stay tuned. Okay, I'm going to use another Crayola marker that is a different shade of grey. I went back into the background with this darker Crayola for more texture. I'm going back into my green-gray one again to build a shading on her shell bra. And now into the tail we go. Okay, this is touch marker... Green-gray. I was gonna say cool gray, but no, it's green-gray. Green gray number five. Ooh, that's a nice dark shade. I'm not gonna put too much on right away though. I wanna build it. Ooh, warm gray number three. So this brand of marker I don't know how old this is. I got this a really long time ago and I haven't really seen it anymore. I don't really know what it's called. It's like AD marker? Chart pack. Hmm. It's pretty old. I remember... Yeah, that was a while ago. A long, long time ago. I only have like a couple of these. Okay, so that's better. Let's build it a little bit more with this warm gray one. Let's get a Crayola in there. So this is another, it looks like a darker gray from Crayola. Yeah, it's quite dark. Good. It actually gives a really nice effect. I, I really like that. back into my Windsor Newton brush markers. The softness of the strokes really adds to the feeling of the surface of her tail. I feel like 
it's like silk just flowing peacefully in the water and if you reach out to touch it, it glides across your fingertips. All right, I think I'll use my Sharpie. This is a gray Sharpie marker. I'm just repeating dots here to add a speckled effect to the fins. They're not too obvious, which is what I like. Here I'm adding the last few layers of shade to make certain areas more dominant. Now I'm shading in the sea creatures in her tail. Okay, this is my Sharpie poster paint marker that has a silver metallic color. And I really like to get this into some interesting effects into this illustration. Okay, I'm just gonna touch up a few little things here and there, and then I'm gonna set it. Let me know what you would name this piece. I don't know if you can see the shimmer effect, but I think it looks pretty good. I hope you enjoyed watching, stay awesome, and see you next week on Fun Friday. Bye!